During the 1970s, John Gotti was making a name for himself as an up-and-coming gangster in the Gambino crime family. As a result of his loyalty and obligation to the family, on June 3, 1974, Gotti was arrested and charged with the murder of James McBratney, an Irish gangster who was a part of a kidnapping crew that specialized in abducting New York City wise guys for ransom in the 1970s. Although later proven to be untrue, McBratney was suspected of kidnapping and killing Don Carlo Gambino's nephew, Manny Gambino. As a result of a successful plea bargain by famed mob attorney Roy Cohn, Gotti would plead guilty to attempted manslaughter and receive a four-year sentence to begin on August 8, 1975. After sentencing, Gotti was transferred to the Auburn Correctional Facility, where he remained until February 24, 1977, when he was then transferred to his final destination, Greenhaven Correctional Facility. Due to the mob's power and influence in the 1970s, Gotti's stay at Greenhaven can be compared to a scene right out of a movie. From weekend furloughs to his Howard Beach neighborhood and clandestine meetings with his criminal associates, Gotti was reported to have left the prison on three separate occasions. According to a report published in May of 1981 titled, Corruption and Abuses in the Correctional System, the Greenhaven Correctional Facility, the State of New York Commission of Investigations uncovered ongoing rampant corruption within the state's prison system. Several inmates were afforded special treatment based on their criminal status and connections to the underworld. Bribes for favors were commonplace. So what exactly was going on in Greenhaven? And how was the future Gambino boss John Gotti able to bribe his way in and out of prison? Let's find out. I'm your host Tony Hansom and this is Corruption Connection. In September of 1971, the Attica prison riot raged on for four days. Prisoners seeking better living conditions rebelled against the guards and rioted, resulting in the deaths of 33 inmates and 10 prison guards. During the aftermath of the Attica uprising, Department of Corrections officials began to implement certain changes in regards to its methods of discipline and control. Prisons were renamed correctional facilities, guards were renamed correctional officers, and wardens were renamed superintendents. The aim was for a more relaxed, less discipline-based system. The ideology was quickly adopted throughout the prison system across New York State, most notably Greenhaven, where a let's make a deal attitude prevailed. The new soft approach toward inmates gave way to a free-for-all at Greenhaven, where prisoners roamed the facility freely and a pay-to-play culture emerged. After about a decade of widespread corruption behind the walls, New York State convened a temporary commission of investigation to look into exactly what was taking place at Greenhaven. The report would detail the following. The inmates who could buy the largest favors were those with organized crime connections and cash. Mobsters and wise guys had carte blanche at Greenhaven. In exchange for things like cash, color TVs, microwaves, watches, and event tickets, guards would let the inmates partake in a slew of illegal and illicit activities behind the wall ranging from drugs and alcohol use to bookmaking and extortion. In addition to their entitled prison lifestyle, some inmates were afforded special privileges which enabled them to leave the prison under certain circumstances. The report would state, prisoners with organized crime connections on trips outside of Greenhaven for medical or family visits were able to stop for costly meals, to visit criminal associates, to have sex, or to walk off unattended. The escorting officers were paid off in cash, sometimes hundreds of dollars a trip, in goods, or with the services of a prostitute. One name that stood out on the list of mobsters receiving special treatment at Greenhaven was John Gotti. It was reported that the future boss of the Gambino crime family left Greenhaven on three different occasions. Hey everyone, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button below and make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support the channel further, please hit the super thanks icon which can be found below each video or in the comment section below. If anyone is interested in becoming a connected member, click the join button to gain access to rare pictures of organized crime figures, untold stories, and exclusive behind the scenes footage. Thank you. Now let's get back to Corruption Connection. The investigation states, John Gotti, identified as a member of the Gambino crime family, has deep roots in the underworld. Gotti has a history of arrest dating back to 1957 when he was 16 years old and specializes in hijacking. On May 22, 1973, 
Gotti and two others, posing as police officers, were engaged in a dispute in a Staten Island bar. A man believed to be a criminal competitor was shot four times and killed by one of Gotti's confidants. Gotti was arrested on June 3, 1974, and originally charged with murder. Later reduced to attempted manslaughter in the second degree, Gotti was sentenced on August 8, 1975, to a maximum term of four years. On April 24, 1977, Gotti was transferred from the Auburn Correctional Facility to Greenhaven. He was released on parole on July 28, 1977. His parole term ended July 29, 1979. On three separate occasions, Gotti left Greenhaven on medical trips to Brooklyn accompanied by officers McGibney and Kloss. The length of time away from the facility on two of the trips is the subject of conflicting records within the facility. One set of records shows trips lasting about six hours. Another set of records shows the same two trips as having lasted in excess of 11 hours. The information received by the commission tends to indicate that the latter time span is correct. After leaving the doctor's office, on all three trips, Gotti was escorted up the Belt Parkway to a fast food restaurant located on Cross Bay Boulevard near his home in Queens. Gotti was met there by one of his criminal associates. Twice Gotti left the restaurant with his associate. The third time the officers took Gotti to meet his wife at their residence. The two officers were taken back by Gotti's friend to a nearby bar to await his return. Eventually Gotti, accompanied by his friends or relatives, met the officers at the bar and they returned to Greenhaven. On each occasion, the officers received approximately $300 to divide. Gotti would remain at Greenhaven until he was granted parole on July 28, 1977. Despite being the most recognizable name on the list, John Gotti was not the only mobster receiving special treatment at Greenhaven. Tune in next time, Isaiah, and cover the other notorious mobsters listed in this report. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss another episode of Corruption Connection.